Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working with Evernote series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week I'm going to give you the video that so many people have been asking me for and that is how do I manage my projects in Evernote? And that is exactly what I'm going to show you this week. Now, for those of you who don't know, I use a system called the Time Sector System. So this means that my task manager does not manage my projects. My task manager, surprisingly, manages my tasks. My projects are managed in Evernote. And that is what I'm going to show you today, how I manage my projects in Evernote. Now, before we go any further, I would just like to say, if you do get any value from this video, then please help me by clicking on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using the new Evernote, then please subscribe to my channel. OK, let me take you into my Evernote now and it will be my real Evernote, I guess and I'll show you how I manage my projects. Okay, so here we have my Evernote account. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you here. This is my demo account. I haven't managed to clean up my genuine Evernote account yet because that is a task that I'm going to use do in late December because I have a couple of weeks off, 10 days off, and I'm going to use that time to get my Evernote cleaned up and ready for the new year. So here's my demo account. And this is the structure that I genuinely use now in my Evernote. So I use basically uh, Tiago Forte's Para system. Para stands for projects, which you can see right here. Projects, areas of focus, resources and archive. Now today what I want to show you is how I manage my projects using Evernote and I genuinely do this. This is where I spend most of my days during the week. I don't manage my projects in a task manager because a task manager is not a project manager. It is a task manager. And so anyway, this is where I keep my master projects list. This is essentially where I would start most days when I'm working on projects. Now, this is just, as I say, a demo account. So some of these are genuine. Some of these are kind of fictitious or they're not exactly where they're showing at the moment. But I'm going to be doing one thing I can assure you is that next year, one of my goals is to update all of my online courses to here, as you can see here, 1080p. I want to go to make sure that they are all in HD format. And I have about six courses that are not in HD uh, format just yet. And so my project is to clean those up. So what I've got is two project, two of these in my in the first quarter of next year. So the first one I'm going to do is my email mastery course update. Now, the principles in that course will remain the same. They haven't changed. But what I am doing at the moment is I'm just reviewing the course outline to see if there's anything that I can add. Now, one of the things that I realized I didn't do was I didn't put in very many setup guides in the course. So I've already decided that I'm going to add uh, a Gmail, an Outlook and an Apple Mail setup guide in the course. So this is an additional stuff. But at the moment, I'm just reviewing the course and the t anticipation com anticipated completion date is the 31st of January. So this is going to be my big project, I guess, in January. Now, what else I do is so I've got if we look at the top now, this is where you can create whatever you want. You can decide what you want to do. Now, I don't have a boss as such. So essentially, I have an anticipated completion date because usually my completion dates, we get to the 31st of January and I just want to do a final check. But it wouldn't be a big deal if I you know, published it on the 2nd of February. That wouldn't be a big deal. But this is where I'm anticipating the completion date. Of course, if you have a boss, you might actually have hard deadline dates. So in which case you might not want to use the word anticipated. And then I've got my notes. These are just things that I would want to remember. These are just little things about what's the purpose of the project, why I'm going to do it and what needs to happen next. And here, the link. Now, this whole thing works from the master project list simply because you can actually 
create a link in Evernote directly to that project. So although I haven't added anything to that just yet, what I can do, let's say I've been working on the project, I've added a lot of stuff in there, I can just click on that and then it'll take me to the actual project note. Now in there I might have links to the, the uh, keynote file, I might have uh, little notes that I want to remind myself. I certainly will have a note that will link me directly to the course outline, which I generally do in Apple Numbers. But that takes me directly to the course notes, and I can add anything I want in there. I can put screenshots, I can create all sorts of things, put links to websites that have additional information that I want to use. So much can go into this note, so much more than can, what can actually go into a task list manager. Now, of course, I might have something in here that's a task. For example, I might have put something like uh, check course thumbnails or something. Now, that's a task, and that would then get sent over to my Todoist uh, because it's a task that I would do. But essentially, I am basically operating my projects from these notes. Now, let's go back to the master project list. Going down to my time and life mastery, again, I've got little details in there. I've got the anticipated completion date. And again, I got a link to the course. One of the personal projects that I have next year is we're going to move house. No, we are. We are going to move house. We've been thinking about it for a while. We're definitely going to move house. So at the moment, we're looking and the anticipated completion date is the 31st of March. So I've got what my wife is currently looking for places in these areas, and I want to be looking at how I would design my studio and office. And again, I can click on the link here, and take me to the project note, and in here I've got our requirements, so at least one spare room to build a studio, a garden, a large kitchen, and over on the east coast of Korea. And a sample of, I just randomly picked this picture just to show you that you can throw images in there to give you a better idea of what you might be looking for in a project. This is not necessarily the house we're looking for, but this is the kind of idea that you can do. You can just drag images in there, screenshots in there, you can put so much into here so much more than you would ever put into a task manager. So that's essentially how I manage my projects in Evernote. I have my master projects list here. Really, really simple to create a new project. You know, I can decide, okay, we're going to do another project. I could put in here, uh, just click on add and say Christmas 2020 because that's something so we are currently planning because we are and anticipated completion date well actually it would be the 31st of December because I'm thinking of the whole week uh, to 2020 oops 2020 and then I could put the various details in there now what's you brilliant about this is I can now just click on that and then I can move this up to the top because that's going to happen sooner so as you can see I've actually got these in uh, anticipated completion date. As it's in progress, what I can do, and I love this thing about Evernote, <clears throat> is I can now highlight that line and I can say, okay, this is a personal project, so I'm going to put that in orange. No, because it clashes with the header. So let's give that green. And so I can color code my projects. So the ones that I'm actually working on, I can color code. And let's say this is the one that really has to be worked on this month. So let's make that one. I can make that sort of uh, let's say a purple, a red color. So you can create whatever you want using the table function in Evernote. And I just love this setup. When I do my weekly planning session now, all I have to do is to go in here. So I could just put a note in here, say we still need to book hotel for new, let's do New Year's Eve. Um, so that's something that so that when I do my weekly planning session, I can see that and say, ah, I need to do that next week. So I will then add it in as a task next week. So I would just go over to my to doist. Uh, in fact, actually, I would just go like this, uh, copy that and I'll show you exactly how I would do this. Go over to my to doist inbox. Look at that clear inbox, paste, job done. I can go back to that. Now, you're going to probably say, what about this? Well, what I could do uh, and this is another reason why I actually quite like the Evernote, I could just immediately from here, uh, I've always got to remember to find it, uh, but I could just put in a checkbox. There you go, job done. So now if that's there, when I'm as I'm viewing my master checklist, I can say, okay, that's done, just check it off, and it's done, job done. 
and so I've not got duplication because that's already in Todoist now and that's it. So that's one of the reasons why I just don't like managing projects in task list managers. It creates a mess. I find that that's where tasks go and die because you never see them again because you just dump them in projects that you're not necessarily working on. Here I get a really clear view of where my projects are, how they're working, how they're operating, and I have the details of the project right here in these project notes. And that's it. That's how I manage my projects using Todoist, as you've just seen, and Evernote. So hopefully that's given you a clear picture. This has been like the most common question I'm asked, how do you manage projects using Evernote? Well, here you go. This is how I'm using Evernote to manage my projects. And essentially, everything's coming from my master projects list. And once a project is completed, I can just delete it and the note itself. So let's just say the Christmas 2020, I haven't got a note for this yet, but let's just say that's done. All I need to do then is send that over to my archive. And the reason why I wouldn't delete it is simply because there could be ideas and things that we got from this year that we would like to do next year. So I would like to keep that note. Uh, but you may want to just delete projects. That's entirely up to you. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching this episode. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use easy to maintain so that you can spend more of your time doing the work and that's what the time sector system is all about it's going to change your whole belief system about way the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when when you are going to do the task and let's be honest it doesn't matter how motivated inspired or how urgent something is if you don't have time to do it it is never going to get done and that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.